Song of Life by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Chase Kavner. Maiden of the laughing eyes, primrose curdled, winged free, virgin daughter of the skies, joy whom gods and mortals prize, share thy smiles with me. Yet lest I, unheeding, borrow pleasure that today endears, and benumbs the heart tomorrow, turn not wholly from me sorrow. Let me share thy tears. Give me of thy fullness life, pulse and passion, power, breath, vision pure, heroic strife. Give me of thy fullness life, nor deny me death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Brook Song to the Spring by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Lillian Elizabeth O beauty, vision of forgotten gladness, fulfillment of a dream that near betrays, O miracle of hope and balm of sadness, creative ecstasy and fount of praise. I lay upon the ground and gave no token, I hid my face mid sodden leaves and sear, my languid pulses chill, my spirit broken. I knew not, O oh, divine one, you were near. For snows and frosts of winter, new departed, still held my will in thrall and weighed me down. And I forgot, forlorn and heavy-hearted, your promise, goddess of the violet crown. But soft as music in remembrance sighing, you fanned me with your wooing breath and I who shed no tears when lone I seemed and dying, wept at your touch and knew I should not die. Now by my banks are tender blossoms blowing, in fragrant loveliness they smile on me, but I must hasten to the river knowing the river will lead onward to the sea. High over me the budding branches quiver with songs that swell in happy harmony, but sweeter is the murmur of the river the river that leads onward to the sea. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When Christ Was Born by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson In the dear way that mothers are And heaven seemed high and earth afar and when grave kings in sumptuous guise adored the babe, she knew them wise, for at his touch her sense grew dim, so all her being worshipped him. A nimbus seemed to crown the head, low nestled in that manger bed, and Mary's forehead to our sight wears ever something of its light. And still the heart, poor pensioner, in its affliction turns to her, best loved of all, best understood, the type of selfless motherhood. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Go Not Too Far by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Iswa In Belgium, in October 2016 Go not too far, too far beyond my gaze, Thou who canst never pass beyond the yearning Which, even as the dark for dawning stays, Awaits thy loved returning. Go not too far, however thy fancies roam, Let them come back, wide circling like the swallow, Lest I for very need should try to come, And find I could not follow. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Edmund Clarence Stedman by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Chase Kavner Life laid upon his forehead a caress, and smiling gave him for his birthright dower. Humor and judgment, passion, purpose, power. And gifts of vision pure and limitless, 
Then, for she ever tempers man's success, nursing the canker in earth's fairest flower, she added pain, and taught him hour by hour, to know that only blessed which doth bless. So following the gleam from early youth, he lent a strengthening hand, and gave his heart, and aided feet, less sure than his, to climb. He sacrificed not others to his art, but worshipped beauty with unselfish truth, and lives the well-beloved of his time. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Interchange by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Lillian Elizabeth. The oriole sang in the apple tree. The sick girl lay on her bed and heard the tremulous note of the glad wild bird. And ah, she sighed, to share with thee life's rapture, exquisite and strong, its hope, its eager energy, its fragrance, and its song. The oriole swayed in the apple tree, and he sang, I will build with my love a nest. Fine as air welcomed a birdling guest, like a pendant blossom secure yet free, it shall hang from the bough above me there, bright, bright with the gold that is combed for me from the sick girl's auburn hair. So he built the nest in the apple tree and burnished over a ball of light. It gleamed and shone in the sick girl's sight, and she gazed upon it wonderingly but when the bird had forever flown, they brought the nest from the apple tree to the bed where she lay alone. O builder of this mystery, the wide and wistful eyes grew dim, and the soul of the sick girl followed him. Dear bird, I have had part through thee in the life for which I long and long, have shared its hope, its energy, its rapture, and its song. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Betrothal by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in October 2016. Both your hands? What mean they, dear? I unworthy, dare I claim you? Then against the world I hold you, mine forever mine men have waked from dreams of joy teach me to believe this rapture lift your eyes oh my beloved let me read your heart is it true ah me those eyes how divinely kind how tender doubt itself could not distrust them or resist their light dear without you I have been poorer than the humblest beggar who against your door at nightfall, kneeling, asked for bread. I have gazed upon your face and have felt such fear oppress me that I trembled. From this moment, nothing fear I more. For whatever perils come, nothing henceforth can divide us, neither follies nor ambitions, neither joys nor tears. Never can you go so far that my love shall fail to find you, seeking ever to deserve you, upward striving still. And though seas should lie between, I shall feel that you are near me. In the twilight and night season, I shall hear your voice. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ask What You Will by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Jenny Meisberger, Gekaba, Washington Ask what you will, I must obey your hest. Thus much, my ladybird, seems manifest To you and me, who well each other know. What you, small tyrant, beg, I must bestow. Come, falter not, but proffer your request. Is it the flower I wear here on my breast? My favorite nag? The book I love the best? Some dainty gown? Some brooch or necklace? No? Ask what you will. 
See how the sun, down sinking to his rest, Gilds with his glory all the roseate west? I linger on in life's chill afterglow. Nay, smile, beloved, like your mother, so. Stay but a moment. Now, my own, my blessed, ask what you will. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dreyfus by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Iswa, in Belgium, in October 2016. France has no dungeon in her island tomb so deep that she may hide injustice there. The cry of innocence, despite her care, despite her roll of drums, her cannon's boom, is heard wherever human hearts have room for sympathy. A sob upon the air, Echoed and re-echoed everywhere, it swells and swells, a prophecy of doom. Thou latest victim of an ancient hate, in agony so awfully alone, the world forgets thee not, nor can forget. Such martyrdom she feels to be her own, and sees involved in thine her larger fate. She questions, and thy foes shall answer yet. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. As From Afar by Florence L. Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Richmond No, Tete To see thee, hear thee, wistful watch I keep. Mother, who in immensity dost dwell. A child who listens for the boundless deep her ear against the shell, and vainly do I seek thy face to scan, lost in the vasty temple where thou art, faint breathings of thy voice Aeolian vibrate against my heart. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Coronation to Can Edward the Seventh by Florence L. Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Richmond Na Tete. If thou be crowned, or if thou be not crowned, with that imperial round, thy forbears from the distant ages war, sorrow and suffering from thee have end, a garden fairer than thy hope descend. And through renunciation thou hast found A sec of sovereignty not dreamed before. If thou be crowned, nay, thou art crowned now, For lo, upon thy brow, so lately shadowed by death's mournful wing, A mighty people's sympathy has laid an aura Whose brightness shall not fade, Whose light, more worth than shrism or seal, or vow, scepter or throne, makes thee indeed a king. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Persephone by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Heather James The wild bird's first exultant strain says winter is over over and spring returns to the wold again with breath as of lilac and clover with a certain soft appealing grace surely some sorrow hath kissed her she gives to our vision her girlish face and we know how we've missed her missed her for on a day she went away long ere the leaves were falling and came no more for the white throats lay or the peewee's plaintive calling in tender tints on her broidered shoon blossomed the leaves of the myrtle and silky buds of the darling june were folded up in her kirtle and fair 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 in her sunlit hair were violets intertwining 
that seemed more fresh and unfading there than when with dewdrops shining she hid them all in her dim retreat but heart a truce to sighing she's here incomparably sweet unchanging and undying we see her brow and we rejoice her cheek as it pales and blushes we hear once more in her thrilling voice the note of the woodland thrushes and through her lashes tear impearled a mystic light is breaking and all the love of the whole wide world seems in her eyes awaking end of poem this recording is in the public domain picard by florence earl coates read for LibriVox.org by heather james for love of justice and for love of truth ay twas for these for these he put aside place and preferment fortune and the pride of fair renown the friends he prized in sooth all the rewards of an illustrious youth and set his strength against a swollen tide and gave his spirit to be crucified for love of justice and for love of truth keeper of the abiding scroll of fame lo we entrust to thee a hero's name life like a restless river hurrying by bears us so swiftly on we may forget the name to which we owe so deep a debt but guard it thou nor suffer it to die end of poem this recording is in the public domain transition by florence l coates read for LibriVox.org by Richmond Na Tete. Awake, my soul, thou shalt not creep and crawl. An earth-bound creature, pitiful and small, whose weak ambition knows no higher goal. O wistful soul, when morning sinks, forgetful of the night, bathe o'er thy restless being in the light, Till neath the mesh that close about thee clings, thou feel thy wings. Then find life's door, trusting the instincts true, that points to heaven and the aerial blue, a winged thing impelled forevermore to soar and soar. And of poor, this recording is in the public domain. Pilgrim Song Written for the Society of Mayflower Descendants in the State of Pennsylvania by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia N. Bohm Pilgrims of the trackless deep, Leaving all our fathers came, Life and liberty to keep In Jehovah's awful name. Neither pillared flame nor cloud made the wild for them rejoice but their hearts with sorrow bowed in the darkness heard his voice things above them they divined thoughts of god forever true and the deathless compact signed building better than they knew building liberty not planned law that ampler life controls all the greatness of our land lying shadowed in their souls in the days that shall succeed prouder boast no time shall grant than to be of them indeed children of their covenant children of the promised day bound by hope and memory brave devoted wise as they strong with love's humility end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Autumn by Florence Earl Coates 
Read for LibriVox.org by Heather James. In her arms, unconscious lying, Cytherea's love is dying. On the hill and in the valley, Through the grove and sunlit alley, Drooping flower and fading leaf Share her grief. But in realms of gloom and night, Proserpina wreathes her hair, And a gleam of tender light Seems to pierce the darkness there. Ah, oh, she sighs, I long have waited With the calm of hopeless pain, But to me the sorrow fated Comes the lost one back again. Lovely things that seem to die Hither now will quickly hie, and tomorrow, in the gloom of this sad and sunless tomb, butterflies will lightly hover, as o'er meadows fair, she saith, for Adonis brings the clover with his breath. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Poverty by Florence Earl Coates, recorded for LibriVox.org by Jude. Pale priestess of a fame discredited, whose votaries today are few or none. Goddess austere, whose touch the vulgar shun, as they would shrink from a Procrustes bed, healing to temples where the feast is spread and life laughs loudly and the smooth winds run wise mother least desired neath the sun at thy chill breasts the noblest have been fed great are thy counsels for the brave and strong yet do we fear thy brooding mystery the griefs the hardships which about thee throng the scanty garners where thy harvests be but seeing what unto the rich belong we know our debt o poverty to thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain the difference by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia N. Bohm. Had Henley died, his course half run. Had Henley died, and Stevenson been left on earth of him to write, he would have chosen to indict his name in generous phrase or none. No envious humor, cold and dun, had marred the vesture he had spun all luminous to clothe his night, had Henley died. Ah, well, at rest, poor Stevenson, safe in our hearts his place is won. There love shall still his love requite, his faults divinely veiled from sight, whose tears had fallen in benison, had Henley died. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Old St. David's by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Heather James Quote, What an image of peace and rest! End quote. Longfellow Written by request of the Pennsylvania Society of Colonial Dames of America and read out at Old St. David's, May 21st, 1904 in Radnor Valley, from the world apart, the little church stands peaceful as of old, guarding her memories, yet half untold, deep in the silent places of her heart. Life comes and passes by her, as it wills, but musing on loved things evanished, she keeps the generations of the dead, herself unchanged amid her beauteous hills unchanged though full of change her days have been since builded here ere washington was born she seemed the home of exiled hearts 
forlorn, The open portal to hope's fair domain. Close as the ivy that adorns her walls, So grateful thoughts have twined themselves and clung About this lowly sanctuary, Sprung from that necessity which ever calls The soul of man to seek for something higher, And hungered for a more celestial bread Than that wherewith his earthly life is fed, And faith was kindled here, and patriot fire. Yea, from this sacred pile, in days gone by, Brave men, to duty nobly dedicate, Went forth to strive against despotic fate, For liberty content to live or die. Some came not back, but some returned victorious, Needing nor badge nor ribbon on the breast, To find here, by the little church, their rest, Heroes and martyrs lowly, yet how glorious! Healed of all hurt, emparadised afar, though they abide, Yet to our reverent sight, about their graves there lingers still a light, Which is not as the light of moon or star, And very peaceful after stormy days, And sturdy as the antique oaks remain, which sentineled the burial of Wayne, illustrious beyond the need of praise. Old Radnor Church bestows her benison, calling to us who from the past yet borrow, to love the right, and living for the morrow, fulfill the hopes of heroes that are gone. So, through whate'er of change the future brings, shall she our memories and faiths defend a temple of the highest to the end immortal through the love of deathless things end of poem this recording is in the public domain the return by florence earl coates sung for LibriVox.org by iswa in belgium in october 2016 who knocks at the door so late, so late? Who knocks so late at the door? Is it one who comes as a stranger comes, Or one who has knocked before? Is it one who stays with intent to bless, or one who stands to implore? My days have been as the years, she said, and my heart, my heart is sore. Love looked in my face for a moment space, one happy spring of yore. Looked in my face with a wistful grace, and left me to grieve evermore. Through all the days the door stood wide, for hope had breathed the vow that love should never be kept outside the years were long and hope hath died the door at last is barred and fast why comes this knocking now yet woe the waiting heart she said and the heart it waiteth for and woe the truth and wasted youth that nothing shall restore the faith that's fled the hope that's dead the dreams that come no more who knocks
knocks at the gate so late so late thou foolish heart be still what is to thee if love or hate knocks in the midnight chill art thou poor heart compassionate is love so hard to kill honey the night is cold she said would i might all forget but memory lives when hope is dead and pity heals regret as light still lingers overhead when sun and moon are set end of poem this recording is in the public domain to helen keller by florence earl coates read for LibriVox.org by Heather James. Life has its limitations manifold, all life, not only that which throbs in thee and strains its fetters eager to be free. The faultless eye may not thy vision hold, maiden whose brow with thought is aureoled, and they who hear may lack the ministry, the august influence of silence, she who brooded o'er the void in ages old prisoner of the dark inaudible light which the night itself could not eclipse thou shinest forth man's being to reveal we learn with awe from thine apocalypse that nothing can the human spirit quell and know him lord of all things who can feel end of poem this recording is in the public domain Madonna by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Heather James He gazed, the little vagrant lad, On the Madonna's gentle face, And all his wistful visage sad Renewed its infant grace. He gazed, reluctant to depart, Then kissed her shyly, as he stood ah wondrous art his lonely heart but yearned to motherhood end of poem this recording is in the public domain i know not how to find the spring by florence earl coates read for librivox dot org by heather james I know not how to find the spring, Though violets are here, And in the boughs high over me The birds are fluting clear. The magic and the melody, The rapture, all are fled, And could they wake, They would but break my heart, Now you are dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Ballad of a Drum by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Heather James The Austrians at Arcola, the fight had lasted long. The Austrians at Arcola, some fifty thousand strong, assailed the bridge where to the French a fourth their strength had come with menace dire and murderous fire then fled before a drum for estienne at arcola heroic little lad seeing the carnage on the bridge with soul grown sick and sad had sworn that he at least would pass beyond the sanguine tide and beat his drum whate'er should come 
upon the farther side. So Estienne at Arcola, no fear had he to die. With one brave sergeant swam the stream, his precious drum held high. And from the river dripping rose amid the battle's hum, a French refrain with might and main to pound upon his drum. The Austrians at Arcola seemed fifty thousand strong, but many were the raw recruits among that mighty throng, who, hearing Frenchmen in the rear, listened confused and dumb, then gave a shout, We're hemmed about, and fled before a drum. The courage shown at Arcola by André Estienne the lesson taught at Arcola is wholesome now as then. Needs there a moral to the tale? Then read in this its sum. The greatest strength may yield at length when sounds a hero's drum. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To William Butler Yeats by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Heather James Tell us of beauty. Touch thy silver lyre, And bid thy muse unfold her shining wings. Tell us of joy, of those unaging things Which wither not, nor are consumed of fire, Things unto which the souls of all aspire. Sing us the mystic song thine Erin sings, Her poignant dreams, her weird imaginings, With magic of thy land of heart's desire. Let others hate, from lips not thine Be hurled reproaches, Since all hate at last must prove abortive, Though it triumph for a while. The gospels that indeed have won the world laid their foundations in the strength of love. Sing thou, a lover, of thy wave-washed isle. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Crippled by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in October 2016 why hast thou bound my feet, then bade me toil ceaselessly after thee? How should a thing so broken, incomplete, ah, how should I, Lord, plant these faltering feet where shifting sands of earth so baffle me? Have I not set thy limits? Who should know better than I what sloughs I lead thee through? Mine is the power to hinder and make free. Walk thou with me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To England by Florence Earl Coates. Read for LibriVox.org by Jenny Meisberger, Gig Harbor, Washington. We are not twain, but one. Though seas divide us, the children of the English speaking race. This nothing now can change, whate'er betide us. This is our birthright grace. The tongue that holds our earliest recollection, whose accents move us like a fond caress. The tongue in which we lisped our first affection must still attach and bless. America and England knit together, offspring of one great mother, sister lands, Fear neither frowning fate nor boding weather When closer joined their hands. Beneath the ocean billow sways the cable That gives them instant knowledge, each of each. And were it sunk, their hearts would still be able To find a way of speech. The younger, who her virgin prairies planted To bless the alien, Teuton, Latin, Gaul, welcomes the poorest as to realms enchanted, and makes them English all. And still the elder, in the hour of danger, the bond of kinship never quite forgot, speaks with commanding accent to the stranger, Be heedful, touch her not. 
for we have felt, have felt with one another, sharing each other's hope, each other's dread. And we have wept as children of one mother, mourning our cherished dead. Is for ourselves this friendship hath caressed us, that heaven hath strengthened so the English speech? Nay, God forbid, the mercy that hath blessed us hath a diviner reach. If with new strength there come not larger kindness, our banners proudly borne were better furled. If we no longer see, for selfish blindness, beyond our realms the world, then poor indeed, though vast our rules supernal, who magnify the ill we might redeem, missing the glory of the hope eternal, the godlike human dream. To solace life there blooms on earth a flower, whose deathless name is love. Of its increase are born compassion, freedom, beauty, power, and of its gift is peace. O oh, sister lands, thrice blessed, though wisdom guide us, yet in our hearts may love perfected lie, deep as the ocean that cannot divide us, kind as the arching sky. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Beethoven by Florence L. Coates, read for LibriVox.org, by Richmond no, Tete. He cursed the day when he was born, and deaf and desolate, resolved in bitterness for long to end his hapless fate. But as the deeper silence grew, an exile from the throng, his yearning spirit voices drew from inner founts of song. And he who called on friendly death to calm rebellious strife, won from his own despair the breath of an immortal life. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. At the Sarah Bernhardt Theatre by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org By Sonia N. Bohm Nothing that man's creative mind hath wrought Is wholly foreign to the mind of man. He looks before and after. In his span of life, infinities of life are caught, Brooding, mysterious, and travail fraught, And near and distant answer as they can, enkindled at the flame Promethean, of world-embracing, heaven-illumined thought. Last night a woman played in Paris here the role of Hamlet. Each distinctive grace, by genius, all subduing and sublime, made native in an alien land and time, as though she, listening with accustomed ear, had learned of English Shakespeare face to face. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I Longed for Love by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Heather James I longed for love, and, eager to discover its hiding place, I wandered far and wide, and, as forlorn, I sought the lone world over. Unrecognized, love journeyed at my side. I craved for peace, and priceless years expended in unrewarded search from shore to shore. But home returned, the weary seeking ended, peace welcomed me where dwelt my peace of yore. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Winter Time by Florence L. Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Richmond Na 
tete. How sweet it is neath apple blooms to lie and breathe their breath, to peep through waving branches at the sky, to feel the zephyrs as they idle by, and question of the brooklet what it saith. How sweet it is to roam through the green world when labors cease, to hear the tranquil tale by nature told, the tale that was not young and grows not old, to find within the heart an answering peace, and though apart from nature we maintain an alien quest, how sweet that we shall leave the strife and strength, some blessed morn, and wander back again, and close our eyes, and in her bosom rest. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. An Optimist by Florence L. Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Richmond Na Tete. Oh, aged man, pray if you know, now answer me the truth. Which of the gifts that the gods bestow is the greatest gift of youth? Oh, aged man, I have far to fare by the diverse path of earth. Which of the gifts that with me I bear is the gift of the greatest worth? Is it the might of the good right arm, whereby I shall make my way? Where dangers threaten and evils harm, holding them still at bay? Is it the strength wherewith I shall climb, where few before have trod, to the mountain tops, the peaks sublime, that glow in the smile of the God? Is it the never-failing will, invincible in might, which armed against oppression still shall vanquish for the right? Or is it the heart, thou aged man, the heart, impassioned, strong, which shall be blessed as naught else can in perfect love ere long? The old man smiled, the listening breeze, grew whist on the sunlit slope the old man sighed ah none of these youth's greatest gift is its hope and of poem this recording is in the public domain james mcneil whistler by florence earl coates read for LibriVox.org by heather james greatest of modern painters he is dead whistler in whom death seemed to have no part he of the nimble wit and jocund heart who sipped youth's nectar at the fountainhead and felt its wine through all his veins run red who worshipped the ideal not the mart and blessed the world with an imperial art whereby who longs for beauty may be fed when things men deem momentous are forgot laurels will bloom for him that wither not and death's inverted torch shall fail to smother the light of genius tender and sublime which with austere restraint and for all time painted the gentle portrait of the mother end of poem this recording is in the public domain my dream by florence earl coates read for LibriVox.org by sonia n bohm Though full of care, I tread the round of toil in which man's eager life is bound. I faint not neath the load I bear, for grievous though the burden sometimes be, I dream of thee. And when, at night, I lie enwound in silence that is sweeter than all sound, the darkness, kindlier than light, shuts out the busy world a while, and free, I dream of thee. 
like to a breath of fragrance blown from some shy blossom hidden and alone redeeming frost and wintry death so ever comes like scent of bloom to me my dream of thee like to a star midst the clouds when angry tempest hurtles in the shrouds and darkling drifts the mariner afar so out of storm and shadow beams on me my dream of thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain civilization by florence l coates read for LibriVox.org by richmond now tete old as the race of man young as the child newborn from glooms plutonian i mount to paths of morn and as i move over vale and hill before me flees the night for on into the darkness still i bear my light the desert stayed me long it's fancied word to tell the salvage subtle and strong opposed me and he fell but the salvage learned from conflict past to battle and succeed and the foolish desert came at last to bloom indeed i hold not for the maimed i wait not for the blind my foot is never lamed whoever may lag behind i hasten on like the wind of god to the conquest he ordains parting the human from the clod undoing chains the thing that hindered my progress as i pass is withered in my breath like patched summer grass i hasten on like the wind of god that must unfettered blow wooing the blossom from the sod wherever i go i thought the hindu throng to worship i awoke the pirate phalanx strong to break the persian yoke i set great pharaoh's captives free the tarquin's pride down held and in a child of galilee overcame the world and of poem this recording is in the public domain alms by florence earl coates read for LibriVox.org by heather james a beggar bent beneath the weight of years to wretchedness inured half reconciled entreated help and i could give but tears yet grateful looked the man on me and smiled end of poem this recording is in the public domain paris by florence l coates read for LibriVox.org by richmond no tete went to thee trojan firebrand of the night whom hecuba in fear to priam bore the choice was given which should calm restore to vexed olympus thou didst spend the right of regal sovereignty and the grave might of godlike wisdom so renouncing more than ever was offered to a man before in poor exchange for sensual delight thy fame is an undying infamy and the great city that had fairest bloomed thy adolescent graces strangely she as if a name resembling thy fordoomed maintains the standards that appeal to thee and by thy very vices is consumed and of poem this recording is in the public domain unrest by florence earl coates read for LibriVox.org by heather james man that will not be beguiled like a fond and happy child from his toil or futile strife feels within his bosom burning all the deep impassioned yearning woven in the woof of life and though far with weary feet he may wander man shall meet no content until he come soon or late 
his fate compelling, To love's domed and starlit dwelling, For he has no other home. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. So War Has Begun by Florence L. Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Richmond Na Tete So war has begun, they say. Well, spring is here before it. If war takes much away and leaves us to deplore it, yet see the woody dells once more are turning green in spite of war. On yonder maple tree the misty bats are swelling. The violets timidly peep from their mossy dwelling, and bluebirds far and near outpour their brimming hope in spite of war. Rumour, with awful tales of death and of disaster, may clamour through our vows, but spring comes hither faster, humming a tender rune of peace, breathing of bloom and life's increase. Old soldiers still relate how at Risaka's battle, as if to compensate, above the din and rattle of musketry continued long, a mocking bird sang rapturous song, and one who lay near death, a soldier sorely wounded, drew less distressful breath, as clear that music sounded, and fell to his tired spirit calm, the most delightful dreams of home. Ah, well, we talk of war, but peace is so much kinder that all our strive is for is just the hope to find her. And see how spring with looks serene is garlanding her halls in green. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. United by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Heather James. Our single lives are circled round by an embracing sea, are joined to all that has been, bound to all that is to be. The past and future meet and cross, and in life's ocean is no loss. The music of the summer dawn, the silence of the midnight sky, the stars in azure deeps withdrawn, reveal a single mystery, and blent with these, the whisperings of spirit find each shy retreat, and link the soul with viewless things, in union close and sweet. Failure itself may count as gain in aspiration, paved with fire may be the path that leads from pain, and unfulfilled desire may kindle that pure flame above whose earthly name is love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Philistia by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org, by Heather James. She waits for man, and leads him artfully, in seeming freedom that beguiles his will, unto the great wheels grinding in her mill, and with a voice of suasive melody entreats him, Lo, all gifts I proffer thee, all joys that adolescent hopes fulfill, all riches that the old may covet still, so thou wilt bow thee down and worship me. But listening her, the spirit that would live must hear from far a nobler message sent, distrustful most where most she seeks to please, unsoftened by her luxury and ease, must hope through higher things to find content, toiling for triumphs which she cannot give. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
at Easter by Florence Earl Coates, recorded for LibriVox.org by Jude. He saw the myriad blooming plants that mark the hallowed morn. He thought upon a lowly mound in a far land forlorn, where yearning love would never come to place or flower or leaf where lonely love would never bring its heartache for relief when low athwart his musings came again that strange appeal which he had listened to before without the power to feel and putting by a vain regret his fallen foe to save ah love he sighed lost love i lay this blossom on thy grave End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Delilah by Florence Earl Coates. Read for LibriVox.org by Heather James. Evermore I hear my name blared upon the cruel street, echoed in my close retreat, breathing fame and branding shame evermore it mocks my dream though i wear the purple fine all the pomp of palestine ravens over gaza scream delilah and when most i should be gay for my triumph lo my sight darkens in another's night and accusing voices say guile may lightly vanquish odds but though mortals pay the price and accept the sacrifice treasons hateful to the gods delilah samson bowing reverent knee unto israel's god and thine didst thou think i loved not mine unto him i yielded thee Yet, O oh mighty in thy fall, Groping still thy God to find, Bond and bound, bereft and blind, Happier thou than she they call Delilah. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Little Minister by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Heather James. Far up the crag, twixt sea and sky, where winds tempestuous blowing by leave giant boulders swept and bare, where frequent lightnings fitful flare and petrels sound their stormy cry, I found a bluebell, sweet and shy lifting its head complacently as guarded by the tenderest care far up the crag and often now when fear draws nigh in thought i stand twixt sea and sky and as of old in my despair i bless the power that set it there that tiny thing with courage high Far up the crag. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Country by Florence Earl Coates. Read for LibriVox.org by Heather James. Beloved, thou hast triumphed everywhere. Thou hast outgrown, men say that selfless right which bade thee for the weak expend thy might and as a giant strong dost claim thy share of earth's rich conquest and will not forbear i listen and behold with grieved sight upon thy beauteous brow a baleful light and something sinister new written there O oh, my beloved, art thou changed indeed? Remembering thy birth and peerless dower, 
canst thou thine altars to compassion find ah woe if thou deface them set to feed the unappeased lust of wealth and power that leagues with the oppressors of mankind end of poem this recording is in the public domain Cradle Song by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Heather James. Thy heart and mine are one, my dear, at dawn and set of sun. When skies are bright, when days are drear, thy heart and mine are one. About us move the hapless folk whom paltry things estrange. The friends that feel their bond a yoke, The loves that lightly change. But thou and I, my bonny child, Their dangers blithely shun, Nor can by folly be beguiled, For thou and I are one. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Socrates by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Heather James. He raised the hemlock to his lips. He drained the fatal draught, calmly conversing with his friends, as he a wine had quaffed. And ah, uh, what wine so rich to bless! The torch of day grown dim, death's cup has less of bitterness for all because of him. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love That Faltered by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Heather James Love that faltered for an hour had not felt the awful power of the god whom gods adore, of the god before whose portal kneel the deathless and the mortal, suppliant for evermore. Love that faltered had not heard love's divine compelling word, or at instant had obeyed, giving with the glad devotion of the river for the ocean, doubting not and unafraid. For with love alone is joy free from shadow of alloy, and before his sacred shrine, sorrow in her deepest sadness guards a hope more blessed than gladness, and through worship grows divine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Pathetic Remembrance E. N. W. Author of David Harem By Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org By Sonia N. Bohm A dying man, so say you, wrote this book? Life is abundant here, from every page. Cheerful, courageous, philosophic, sage, With no repining, and no backward look. It flows as healthful as the mountain brook, that gathering scent of grape and saxifrage makes joyous pastime of its pilgrimage, freshening each pebbly bend, each mossy crook. The story journeys to forgetfulness? Truly, yet he who wrote with failing breath ennobled human nature, for since he who died in far Samoa by the sea, there scarce hath come, through failure and success, a braver spirit to the gates of death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Nature by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia N. Bohm 
I weave the beginning. I fashion the end. Life is my fellow, and death is my friend. Time cannot stay me, nor evil betray me. They that would harm me, unknowing, defend. I ravel asunder, I knit every flaw. Blossoms I scatter, with tempests I awe. Birthplace of duty, and shrine of all beauty. Firmly I govern, and love is my law. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Unbidden by Florence Earl Coates. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Unbidden. As shakes the breast of giant calf when Allah's thunders near resound, so nations quail before my wrath and shudder at its sound. The broad Euphrates bears my name to Oman's waves triumphantly. The lordly Indus sings my fame to the wandering Indian sea. For me Khorasan tempers steel, the Turkoman rears matchless steeds. Azerbaijan grows me her wine and luscious fruit for summer needs. My peacock throne burns like a gem and stars blaze in my diadem. The mighty vie to honor me, kings at my table humbly sit and tributary satraps fret when banished over long from it. What then have I to do with thoughts that blanch the cheek and chill the blood? Some wretched slave may quake and start, who, hastening through Gilan's lone wood, hears ravening jackals' distant howl. But I? Nay, who doth not revere the brazen doors my guards defend? Who dares unsummoned enter here? Shall baseless terrors mock my peace, and chide desired sleep away? Forbidding her to close mine eyes, tormenting me when I would pray. The years are long, yet time hath speed, and earth forgets what once she knew. For hidden far beneath her view, the grasses wave above my dread. The guests attend me, wake my will, put off this garb of sullen gloom, the dead may neither wound nor blight, and vengeance slumbers in the tomb. Be thou but firm, and all's secure, match well thy purpose to the hour. Nor babble what is voiceless still, not Elbus shall abase thy power. Heard you a knocking then, my lords? No? And the wind you think sounds so? To me twas as a stroke of doom reverberate from some long ago. Well, since twas nothing, speed the cheer, nor sit like phantoms dull and mute, for something which ye did not hear. Ye thought me wary, so, and then? Am I not mortal like the rest? May I not falter in my mirth, nor palsy every guest? That knocking, ah, you note it now, it vexed me men should disallow a sound more dread than frenzy's shriek, and prate of a wind-blown bow. Thine errand, sirrah, who's without that may not be denied? A stranger? And thou darest bring his hests unbidden before thy king? A stranger, though his need be stout and stubborn as his pride, is't here that he should seek our face? Command him to the appointed place and those who should provide. Ha, answerest thou, not be denied? Grows life so worthless then? Go drive him hence, thou tiresome knave. Friends, to our feast again. This imbecile hath broke the cheer, but day is distant yet, and ere her joyless flags appear, we'll pay mad pleasure's debt. Drink to all revels, foes to thought. Drink, drink to poppy trances deep. And, since from sleep holds aloof, to oblivion drink the dreamless sleep. Again that sound affronts the air. Ill-omened wretch, proclaim thy care, my soul thy pallor hates. What hounds thee back? Whence, whence this din? The stranger? He hath passed the gates, and waiteth there, within? And waiteth there? Admit him then, 
Who hunts the panther to his den flies not the panther's rage. Fool, fool, thou deemst it wise to beard our fury? Gods, the face I feared. At height of bloom so cometh blight. Avaunt, avaunt thou withering sight. Eternal pains begin. I swoon to hell's abysmal night. Ah, horror, back my sin. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. War by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. War. In the beginning I was born, with man from out the dust, and presently from earth uptorn came cruelty and lust. Away the vassals of my will, they twain go with me still. Where'er my flashing sword they see, where'er they scent my breath. Quickly they follow after me, bringing despair and death. Yet still the mighty wear with pride my liveries crimson dyed. Once long ago, in ages gone, when man seemed as the brute, I looked with dread to wisdom's dawn and virtue's ripening fruit. Now sages wreathe my brow with bays and poets chant my praise. And once in little Bethlehem, once only, not again, peace wore a royal diadem, but I could trust to men, and crucified upon a tree, peace is a memory. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love Reproachful by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama love reproachful then love reproachful sighed art thou become voiceless who in my praise wast eloquent to wound my name unto high heaven is sent a vain lamenting the exordium of fruitless plaint and chiding wearisome while they to whom my chiefest joys are lent to worship me in silence are content love even so whom thou dost bless are dumb Listen, that strain of ecstasy and pain, Far echoing from Thrace it breathes again, Lost Philomela's passion to prolong, Yet nested near in solitude the dove, Beneath thy very pinions gracious love, Coos to her mate, but sings the world no song. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Memory by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama In Memory, Eliza Sprout Turner How should we think of her as dead Whose words to many are as daily bread? How should we deem her gone Whose help is not and cannot be withdrawn? We do not mourn the orb as set Whose shining beams are all about us yet. Ah, no, they live indeed, the dead by whose example we are upward led. Nor was her service vain who gave herself again and yet again, and when her spirit was most sad, healed her deep hurt by making others glad. She lived to bless, her generous mind despaired not of the humblest of her kind, for in her heart was born love for the poor, unfriended and forlorn, which, after love's perfected way, judged not itself of greater worth than they she lived to bless love made her strong to widen good to limit hate and wrong to ease the path of woe and choosing in the christ-like way to go the future held for her no fear who self-forgetting made her heaven here end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Irish Shamrock in South Africa by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama The Irish Shamrock in South Africa O little plant so meek and slight, Tinct with the emerald of the sea, Which like a mother day and night Croons melodies to thee, 
emblem of Aaron's hope and pride. Though crushed and trampled underfoot, thou still art found the meadows round, upspringing from thine own sweet root. Of sorrow thou hast been the sign through weary, unforgiving years. The dews upon thy tender vine have seemed thy country's tears. Now, now, for evermore, thou art symbol of all that's brave and true. Blessed as a smile of thy sunlit isle, in the old world honored and the new. For they lie asleep in a land of strangers, far from the home their fame endears. The Innings Killings, the Connaught Rangers, the Dublin Fusiliers, and the little plant they loved so well, better than fairest flower that blows, is set apart in Britannia's heart, with the Scottish thistle and the rose, is set apart and never again shall humanize the shamrock sea without a thought of the heroes slain, whose splendid loyalty, stronger than ancient hate or wrong, sublimed them midst the battle's hell, a tidal wave from the souls of the brave, that made them deathless as they fell. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Gifts by Florence Earl Coates. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Gifts. One in her service patient wrought, striving a duteous faith to prove. But at the last, her eyes still sought the face of one who gave but love. Grateful, from one she daily drew strength to sustain her failing breath. But at the last, her spirit knew that love is more than life, than death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Breathless We Strive by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Breathless We Strive Breathless we strive, contending for success according to the standards of our day. What is success? Is it to find a way, wealth out of all proportions to possess? Is it to care for simple pleasures less, while grasping at a more extended sway and sacrificing to our gods of clay submerge the soul at last in worldliness by grasmere stands a cottage small and poor the dove was once its emblem and the sign that marked it as a wayside inn obscure but frugal dwelt high consecration here and grateful thought still guards it as a shrine hallowed by that success which time but makes more dear end of poem this recording is in the public domain adonis by florence earl coates read for librivox dot org by jason in panama adonis love is dying lay him low pile the blossoms for his bed here where languid poppies blow, pillow soft his beauteous head. Let their dream breath float around him, even as my arms enwound him, in the summer long ago. Say not it was yesterday, hours have been as years since then, and shall rapture fled away, never more return again? Love with throbbing heart of fire, love with thrilling voice and low, Hast thou quenched fond desire in this breast of snow? Then, O oh death, I cry to you from my grief immortal. Goddess kind of all most true, ope to me your portal. In your calm my senses steep, close mine eyne from tears grown dim. Give me sleep, I ask but sleep, in the grave with him. Can it be that flowers were spring where all lifeless love shall lie? Can it be that birds will sing, though Adonis die? Never earthly bloom, I wis, with his beauty could compare. Never voice was sweet as his who lieth there. And thou, blue Indian sky, thou didst smile upon our lot, 
and I knew my love must die, but believed it not. Whither now to take my way, if I seek on mountains bare, or in caverns hid from day, shall I find him there? Will the rivers give him back, or the woods of Adon tell? Will the hounds that loved him well follow in his track? Ah, the distance matters not, nor the way I mournful tread. Every path leads from the spot where my love lies dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Compensation by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Compensation When winter's sovereignty complete has left us not a leaf to cull, then come the feathery snow and sleet, so God doth love the beautiful. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Renewal by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Renewal These sounds sonorous rolling, these vibrant tones and clear, listen, the bells are tolling the requiem of the year, the year that dies as mute it lies mid fallen leaves and sear. Now by the fading embers that on the hearthstone glow, How sadly one remembers the things of long ago, The wistful things with flame-bright wings that vanished long ago, The self-effacing sorrow, the generous desire, The pledges for the morrow, enkindled at this fire, Enkindled here, O dying year, where smoulders low thy pyre, what hope and what ambition, what dreams beyond recall, and look we for fruition to find them ashes all? Is life the wraith of love, of faith? Then let the darkness fall. The sparks, how fast they dwindle, how faint their being glows. Quickly the fire rekindle, ah, quickly, ere it goes. Woo living breath from the lips of death, from ashes bring the rose. Kind God, the bells in gladness, the rose of hope hath bloomed. For consecrating sadness, life hath its own resumed, and welcomes here the newborn year, a phoenix unconsumed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Kenilworth by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Kenilworth Towering above the plain, proud in decay, Her tendrilled ivies like a woman's hair, Veiling her hurt and hiding her despair, The monument of a departed day, The shadow of a glory passed away, Stands Kenilworth, Stripped of her pomp, and bare of all that made her so supremely fair, When power with love contended for her sway. In this wide ruin, solemn and serene, Where moved majestical a virgin queen, The peacock struts, his ominous plumes outspread, And here, where casting an immortal spell, A sad and girlish presence seems to dwell, the wild bird nests and circles overhead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Of Future Days by Florence Earl Coates. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Of Future Days. I do not ask to know whither thy spirit after death shall go. I only ask that I, where'er thou be, may follow thee. All torment and regret thou with thy love couldst teach me to forget. And heaven, 
Alas, what hope of heaven for me, bereft of thee? Nay, faithless doubt and fear I lose in him who gave thee to me, dear. He would not so unite to rend a part who made the heart. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Demeter by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org, by Heather James. Thou, thou hast seen the child I seek. The veil is thine, and the cloudy peak, divine Apollo, whose eyes doth follow each secret course. Ah, speak! I have sued to the other gods in vain. Thou wilt not disregard my pain, but by thy power win back my flower to gladden earth again. Fair as the poppy amid the wheat, her breath as the breath of the wild grape, sweet. In the twilight tender, she loved thy splendor of perfect day to greet. And it is thou, of God's most dear, thou sun god who hast led me here, whose smile caressing, my wrong redressing, tells me the maid is near. Blessed, oh, blessed be thy light. She comes from the shadows, blissful sight, to the breast that bore her, to the yearning for her, that fills me day and night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Vita Nuova by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Heather James What miracle is here? What vision of forgotten things and dear? The grass, how green it lies in coverts deep! The pussy willows, sentinels of the wood, How slim, how fair, each neath its downy snood They stand, new-waked from sleep and the enchantment cold that seemed as death, could it no longer hold against the glow that warmed the breast of earth? Hearken, what myriad little lives once more come knocking, knocking at the mother's door, importunate for birth. The trees that look so bare are conscious that the tender leaves are there, folded yet faintly stirring in the bud, and upward from each buried rootlet runs the golden ichor, gift of vernal suns unswelling to the flood. And, oh, thrice loved of yore, whence comes that note? It was not here before. The white throat, by what blessed magician's art, flung out of silence, comes that clear appeal to make the jaded and insensate Feel new yearnings of the heart. A something in the song Shall hardly to a later strain belong. A tremulous and naive ecstasy That moves the soul, Which, eager then to live, Petitions life, Ah, stay a while, And give a little heed to me. I also feel the spring, I also long to spread my wings and sing, unvexed by cares that canker and consume to hope to dream ere winter come to capture the fleeting thrill the fragrance and the rapture of beauty in its bloom end of poem this recording is in the public domain joan of arc by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Heather James. Her spirit is to France a living spring from which to draw deep draughts of life. Today, as when a peasant girl she led the way victorious to Reims and crowned the king, high and heroic thoughts about her cling, and sacrificial faiths as pure as they moving the land she loved with gentle sway to be 
for love of her a better thing. Was she unhappy? No, her radiant youth burned like a meteor on to swift eclipse, but where it passed there lingers still a light. She waited, wistful, for the word of truth that breathed in blessing from immortal lips when earthly comfort failed and all around was night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rouen in the Prison of Joan of Arc by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Heather James. She laid her head upon the straw, she who had crowned a king of France, and angel shapes whom no man saw, for her deliverance knelt at her feet, less pure, less sweet, a blessing in each glance. She laid her head upon the straw, she who gave France her liberty, and angel shapes whom no man saw. Ah, me, how could men see? Watched till the day, then bore away something the flames set free. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Blessed by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Heather James. Blessed, so they have named her, with just pride, deliberate care, and cautious circumstance. The holy council have beatified the maid of Orleans, martyred child of France, who, at Domremy's village altar kneeling, ignored by friend and foe, through all her young, unsullied spirit, feeling the tears of a despairing people flow, implored relief, and following the word which none save she had heard, delivered France and crowned her long ago. Rejoice, Dom Ramy, midst thy bowery green. She was thine own, whom all at last would claim. The greatest miracle that earth hath seen since out of Nazareth a Saviour came. Lowly as thou, though sheathed in armour bright, her soul was as the snow, yea, as the lilies of her banner, white. The church hath blessed her, but man's heart less slow, remembering her service and the price of her dear sacrifice, gave her the name of blessed long ago. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Give Me Not Love by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Heather James Give me not love which would enthrall a spirit panting to be free, but give me love which more than all would find it sweet to soar with me. The bird that close to earth doth cling may, darkling, be content to sing, but full the sunlight shines afar, and there be heights where eagles are. Give me not love which, hour by hour, like to the rose, doth pale its hue, but love still constant as the flower which opens to each morn anew, not love which, shadowed by the tomb, a little space doth languid bloom, but love which draws its deeper breath from altitudes that know not death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Jean-Francois Millet by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Heather James Not far from Paris, 
in fair Fontainebleau, a lovely memory-haunted hamlet lies, whose tender spell makes captive and defies forgetfulness. The peasants come and go, their backs too used to stoop, and patient sow the harvest which their narrow need supplies, even as when earth's pathos in his eyes Millet dwelt here, companion of their woe. Loved Barbizon, with thorns not laurels crowned, he looked thy sorrows in the face and found vital as seed warm nestled in the sod the hidden sweetness at the heart of pain trusting thy sun and dew thy wind and rain at home with nature and at one with god end of poem this recording is in the public domain Memory by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Heather James. If it be true, as some aver, whose wisdom not endears, that portioned to each human lot are fewer smiles than tears, then merciful Mnemosyne, how great to thee our debt, that we remember all our joys our sufferings forget end of poem this recording is in the public domain motherless by florence earl coates sung for LibriVox.org by iswa in belgium in october 2016 he was so small, so very small, that since she ceased to care, twas easy just to pass him by, forgetting he was there. But though too slight a thing he seemed of interest to be, one heart had loved him with a love as boundless as the sea he was so poor so very poor that now since she had died he seemed a tiny threadbare coat with nothing much inside but our treasure he concealed and dust of none relief his shabby little bosom hid a mighty grown up grief. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Burial of Robert Louis Stevenson at Samoa by Florence Earl Coates. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia N. Bohm. Where shall we lay you down to rest? Where will you sleep the very best? Mirthful and tender, dear and true, Where shall we find a grave for you? They thought of a spirit as brave as light, And they bore him up to a lonely height, And they laid him there where he loved to be, On a mountain, gazing o'er the sea, they thought of a soul aflood with song, And they buried him where the summer long Myriad birds his requiem sing, And the echoing woods about him ring. They thought of a love that life redeems, Of a heart the home of perfect dreams, And they left him there where the worlds aspire, In the sunrise glow and the sunset fire. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Poor Love Said Life by Florence Earl Coates 
read for LibriVox.org by Daphne Ma. Poor love, said life, that hast nor gold, nor lands, nor other store, I win. Thy very shelter from the cold is oft but lowly built and mean. Nay, though of rasses be my bed, yet I am rich, love said. But, argued life, thrice fond art thou to yield the sovereign gifts of earth, the victor sword, the laureled brow, for vision thinks of little worth. Love gazed afar with dreamlit eyes, and answered, Nay, but wise. Yet love, said life, what can atone for all the travail of thy years, the yearnings vain, the vigils lone, the pain, the sacrifice, the tears? Soft as the breath breathed from a rose, the answer came, love knows. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. At Dusk by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Christy Luther in Austin, Texas, January 20th, 2017 Earth, mother dear, I turn at last a homesick child to thee. The twilight glow is fading fast, and soon I shall be free to seek the dwelling dim and vast, where thou awaitest me. I am so weary, mother dear, thy child of dual race, who gazing past the star beams clear sought the undying's face. Now I but ask to know thee near, to feel thy large embrace, tranquil to lie against thy breast, deep source of noiseless springs where hearts are healed and wounds are dressed and not or sobs or sings against thy breast to lie at rest a life that folds its wings sometime i may for who can tell awake no longer tired and see the fields of asphodel the dreamed of, the desired, and find the heights where he doth dwell to whom my heart aspired. And then, but peace awaiteth me, thy peace, I feel it near, the hush, the voiceless mystery, the languor without fear. Enfold me close, I want but thee, but thee, Earth Mother, dear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Clouds by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Christy Luther in Austin, Texas, January 21st, 2017 The Clouds the clouds give back to earth again the moisture they absorb. An atom floating in the sun is lasting as an orb. We fear lest ill should fly itself and wrong at last prevail, lest good should lack its just reward and light untimely fail. We falter and distrust the fate we may not understand, interrogate the oracle when God is close at hand. And still the clouds go drifting by, or fall in fruitful rain. High over us, the stars undimmed, benignant, shine again. And from that temple, viewless, vast, where failure is unknown, the Father of existences keeps watch above his own. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The next section is Poems of the War for the Liberation of Cuba. 
and the first poem is America by Florence Earl Coates, read for LibriVox.org by Christy Lufer in Austin, Texas, January 23rd, 2017. Thy children are inspired by thee. Blessed by thy gift of liberty, they go to make the wretched free. Motherland. They were indeed not sons of thine, could they withhold that gift divine. Of liberty thou art the shrine. Motherland. Thy children glory in thy name. They ride it as with words of flame in deeds that put thy foes to shame. Motherland. In deeds of daring, unforecast, in deeds of valor, unsurpassed, in deeds that make thee known at last. Motherland. Thy strength it was that made them strong. Thy justice taught them hate of wrong. They are of thee, to thee belong. Motherland. Their lungs are filled with thy sweet breath. Thy voice they hear, and what it saith. They love thee, and they fear not death. Motherland. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Welcome by Florence Earl Coates. Read for LibriVox.org by Christy Lufer in Austin, Texas, January 23, 2017. Come home, the land that sent you forth from east and west and south and north looks wistfully beyond her gates, extends her arms and waits and waits. At duty's call she stilled her woe. She smiled through tears and bade you go to face the death you would not shun. Brave hearts, return. Your task is done. Not as you journeyed come you back. A glory is about your track of deeds that vanquish tyranny and set a tortured people free. Deeds sprung of manhood's finest grace that envious time will not efface. Deeds that proclaim a nation's worth and crown the land that gave them birth. America but waits to greet and bless you, kneeling at her feet. Your standards fair, in honor furled, the proudest mother in the world. Come home, the land that sent you forth from east and west, from south and north, looks wistfully beyond her gates, extends her arms, and waits. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Memorial Ode by Florence Earl Coates Read for LibriVox.org by Christy Lufer in Austin, Texas, January 28, 2017. Written by request of the City of Philadelphia for the Peace Celebration and read at Independence Hall, October 28, 1898. The peace we longed to keep, our fate denied. Reluctant we awoke as from a sleep, and saw the face of duty deified. We followed with dismay the awful hand that drew us step by step along the way, and pointed to an agonizing land. Nearer it led and nearer to dreadful death, while ever to the spirit whispered clearer a voice that promised something more than breath, a voice that prophesied a victory through mildness and compassion sanctified, of conquest that ennobles and makes free. America today binds in her hair the olive and the undecaying bay, an adult nation, gloriously fair, who with a mother's pride her children gave, who feels their triumph as her oceans wide, and sorrows for her unreturning brave. Peace is their martyr crown. No length of years can chill her love or lessen their renown. But ah, her peon falters, hushed in tears. 
Who are these advancing with bugle note and drum, their bayonets far glancing? Say, who are these that come? They are thy sons, great mother, such sons hath any other. Be comforted, and bless them as they come. Be comforted, though all respond not to thy voice. Though thine impassioned call some answer not, nor hear, O mother, with thy valiant ones rejoice, Who died for man, not glory, And live in deathless story, Joined to the names imperishably dear. Blessed who fall for freedom, Where her flag triumphant waves. Blessed who sleep in quiet With her laurel on their graves, Remembered through the echoing years, And hallowed by a nation's thankful tears. And blessed to the living, who fill our hearts with hope and glad forgiving, who, mid the battle's deafening roar, when fell the ranks like autumn leaves, guarded the standard of the free, the aegis of our victory, who fevered and hungered bore the more appalling tests of tragic war, and laureate return and bring to us their sheaves. Warriors of the land and warriors of the sea, bold to meet adversity, and constant to withstand. Heroes of battle, hospital, and tent, men chivalrous and never tired, women devoted, love-inspired, who nursed to life the loyal ones you lent. And ye whom all must praise, ye darker children of the nation, who with a patriot hope and proud elation face danger that the stoutest heart dismays, and in the trench and on the mesa saw in memory the men who fought with Shaw for freedom at the parting of the ways, thrice gallant souls, who in the van pressed forward with one only plan, one purpose, to prevail, and neath the Mauser's burning hail sprang dauntless to the grave, your whiter comrades threatened lives to save who stumbling falling forward onward still fought step by step up the dread hill up to the crest where red the death tide ran up to the high estate and dignities of man peace sound the drums the great roll call ah many to fame's clarion note make answer but not all yet ye are brave have planted seed not for a day but distant times remote, which priceless from the fruitful earth shall spring in harvest of pure thought and noble deed to bless the land we love, immortal blossoming. Into the unresponsive past, on winged feet, the years fly fast. Scarcely we pluck the blooms of May, a shadow on the wold is cast, and lo, it is December. Yet, as a light to guide our way, some visions of a troubled day gone by we still remember. And one there is, one image full of rest, a memory of manhood singly blessed, the savior of our nation and her chief, matchless in judgment, love, compassion, power, the man meet for the hour, assailed by ignorance and half-belief, each searching from too near a view, to read the soul of all our souls most true. He went his way unselfish, ministering, but in the bud and promised time of spring he died, and then we knew. Abraham Lincoln, April 15th, 1865 So, in the years to come, when we shall sleep, tired pilgrims at life's everlasting goal, in the hid hands that faithful minutes keep shall all the record of our times unroll. Our sons shall read, emblazoned on the scroll, his name revered and great, who sways our continent with mild control, pilot whom war tempestuous could not whelm, who stood through every peril at the helm, guiding to peaceful port our ship of state, he neither needs our praise nor vindication, who in the coming years shall take his place with the wise rulers of the English race, a leader of the strength that fits a freeborn nation. 
William McKinley, September 14, 1901 America, my home! How dear today, in beauty and augmented splendor, with smile of mother-love so tender it doth each sacrifice for thee repay. Thou standest regnant and secure, thy hands extended to the helpless poor, thy warlike brows unbent, thine armor laid away. To love devoutly is to pray. O land, for thee in thy victorious hour we lift our souls in supplication, that righteousness may sanctify thy power, and fill thee with that purer exaltation which bides with those who highest hests obey. O oh, may the lips that praise thy strength laud thee for justice rather, and for truth welling immediate from thy heart of youth, to bless thy children first, and all mankind at length. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Buffalo by Florence Earl Coates. Read for LibriVox.org by Christy Lufer in Austin, Texas, February 4, 2017. Buffalo. A transient city, marvelously fair, humane, harmonious, yet nobly free, she built for pure delight and memory. At her command, by lake and garden rare, pylon and tower majestic rose in air, and sculptured forms of grace and symmetry. Then came a thought of God, and, reverently, let there be light, she said, and light was there. O oh, miracle of splendor, who could know that crime, insensate, egoist, and blind, destructive, causeless, caring but to smite, would in its dull Sumerian gropings find a sudden way to fill those courts with woe and swallow up that radiance in night? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.